Hello everybody, how are you doing? This webio is on a second metro line in the Indian city of Pune. Second metro line you may ask? Well, three months ago I actually proposed a first metro line which goes from Busari to Koregon Park. And the line looks pretty sparse, right? Well, obviously there are many other stations, but I wanted to make this the focus of the second line. So I only display the terminal stations and the intersection station on the first line. I've made a webio on that first line, so if you want to watch it, please check it out after this webio and I'll link it in the description. This is an extension of the Pune Metro to serve the northern and southern reaches of Pune. Now the first line served West Pune here and East Pune here, but it missed North and South. And previously North and South would have been a non-factor, but nowadays Pune is expanding all over, including the North and South particularly all the way up Bainer Road and south on Satara Road. Now this actually doesn't follow Satara Road here but I'll explain that later. The line is 18.08 kilometers long and has a top speed of 80 kilometers per hour. Nine kilometers of the line is underground and the underground section occurs between just south of Tavare and just west of Ganeshkind. And this area right here is basically like the central Pune section. So a combination of flyovers on roads or overcrowdedness and like not following roads necessarily, especially through the pets area here, was why I made this underground. This line will intersect line one at Narayan Pet. It is at the center of Pune, right under Lakshmi Road. So it'll serve as a convenient place for all of Pune to converge and go to their final destination, not to mention getting some shopping done on the famous Lakshmi Road shops. So let's get into the colors and what they mean. Now, magenta is a viaduct. And in this case, a viaduct would be on top of a median of a road. So this would save space. And each of these lines will only have two tracks. There's no fancy express or local. It's just a basic two track line. So it'll be on top of a viaduct. And the green is tunnels. Normally I make tunnels blue, but given the rainbow of houses and buildings all across Pune, I wanted to make the tunnel stand out more because blue would look too dissolved into Pune and it wouldn't really show out much in this webio. So I made the tunnels green both on line 1 here and line 2 here. So this line goes from Bainer West all the way to Mahalakshmi. It serves many important areas like Swarget, Narayan Path which is the intersection of the two lines, Shivaji Nagar, Ganeshkin which is close to the University of Pune and Bainer West which is close to the Mumbai Pune Highway so people coming from there won't have to go down to Busari to get there. Busari will serve more of like the Urodi and Karve areas but Bainer West will serve traffic, more traffic coming from Mumbai or Lonavla or that direction. So without further ado, let's zoom in to Mahalakshmi. So here we are at Mahalakshmi. Mahalakshmi will be the southern terminus of Line 2. And I actually made it on Swami Road rather than Satara Road. And the reason is twofold. One is that Satara Road does not have a wide enough median, it's too much overcrowding. And also they're building flyovers. So building an elevated metro line would be impractical over flyovers and building a tunnel would heavily jack up the price. Also it turns out that Swami Road goes through more of the central part of the developed area. And I'll zoom out a little bit to show you the big picture. This is Satara Road here, and this is Swami Road here. Much of the development is actually to the east of all of this. So to serve all these new upcoming developments here more easily, I made it go under Swami Road here because Mahalakshmi is much closer to this eastern section here. Now Mahalakshmi itself is more of like a slums region, but there's a lot of new upscale apartments being constructed. And Pune is an all-around city. It doesn't have one unique place where many people work. People work all over. Many offices are coming up in Mahalakshmi. Many people in Mahalakshmi can work in like Swarget all the way up in Gokil, Kind or Westin, go through lots of places. So I made Mahalakshmi the southern terminus and didn't make it go further east. And you may be thinking why, because there's a lot of development here, but this is only around one kilometer, so people can easily drive here. And there's enough room to make some type of parking garage at Mahalakshmi, but the road here becomes medianless. So to make a metro above this would be really 
like useless almost. Not to mention Mahalakshmi serves all the complexes here just around Kataraj Lake, including Rajesh Colony and Anand Colony. So all this can be served by Mahalakshmi here. This is the reason why I didn't make it go east like this. So after Mahalakshmi, this is an elevated station. The line continues on the, along the median of Swami Road. And the next station is Manish Society. Now Manish Society has some slums here, but it's much more of a higher end district. So think of this as where more people will start their journey. Mahalakshmi has a little more offices than Manish Society. So this will be more like more parking spaces would be required, like many facilities in a station that would work well in a residential sit setting. And Pune does have a relatively high ownership of especially scooters and whatnot. So I think a scooter garage would work very well in Manish society. After Manish society, the next station is Ramya Nagari. Ramya Nagari is very similar to Manish society and it has a higher clientele. There are even some single family houses and small apartments here. So you need to make this metro reasonably comfortable. You don't want to make it as bad as the Mumbai Suburban Railway, for example. You don't want to even make it as bad as a leaking Mumbai Metro, because that's honestly embarrassing. The first week when the Mumbai Metro opened, it started leaking during the monsoon season, and many people got fed up with it, and they just went back to driving along the busy Anderi Gatkopar link road. I don't want this metro to be like that. I want it to be accessible for as many people as possible, including people of all income levels, but at the same time be attractive to all people. Now, I don't know if we should make like a first class or second class system, like how the Mumbai Suburban Railway does, but that could be a very cool possibility that that could happen. So like second class could be open air, non-air AC but maybe fans it'll serve a lot more people in the local area like the slums for example and it'll greatly reduce the pollution and congestion first class will be AC comfortable seats probably leather high tech all of that I'm now not necessarily thinking that would be the way to go but if you like that please leave that in the comments I think Pune is a city where such a system would really work well so after Ramyanagari the next station is Parijat Society and this is the last station on a viaduct and this is again a relatively high-end area residential so after that it continues on Swami Road but it goes underground as it enters the busy Satara Road Satara Road is a main arterial road serving South Pune and the next station is Tavare Tavare has quite a bit of offices here with the intersection of Satara Road and Swami Road. A lot of retail and offices here due to a busy intersection. And Tavare station will be underground so will not impede any of the space here and it will keep values high for offices. So Tavare could be very much an office district in the near future assuming Line 2 of Pune Metro is constructed. After Tavare, the next station is ST Colony. Now ST Colony has a mixture of residential and commercial. There's some slums here, but the main focus is all this high-end residential. What you'll realize is Line 2 serves a much higher clientele, higher wealth clientele than Line 1. Now Line 1 did serve Koregon Park, which is the wealthiest part of Pune. But overall, I think Line 2 will serve a wealthier clientele. So maybe making a classes system could actually work. After ST Colony, the line continues to Swargit. Swargit is a big station. It will be one of the busiest stations on the line for sure. And the reason is because this intersecting road here already has a bus rapid transit. So that could be easily integrated to Swargit by building a flyover over Shivaji Road and connecting to the underground Swargit station. Something like that. Swargit also serves all of this eastern area here. So BRT goes all the way east to Magarpata city and beyond. These are like all the planned communities. And for all these communities here, if they want to go to the Northwest, the easiest way is to either go to Koregon Park or go to Swargit. And if you're down here, especially along Southern Solapur Road, Swargit is a place to go via the BRT. So Swargit is a big commercial district. There's some residential too, but many people come to this area for shopping. After Swargit, the line continues underground and it deviates from Satara Road and it enters a Pets region. 
The Peth region is the old part of Pune. Now this may look like it's low wealth, but it's it's lower wealth than the other stations we went through, besides Mahalakshmi, which is like a pure, like mostly a slum area, but it's still much wealthier, as I said, to slums. So this station is Shukravar Peth. Now Shukravar actually means Friday in Marathi, and Marathi is a language that is spoken in this part of Maharashtra. So think of it as a Friday station. That's kind of funny, right? <laughs> But anyway, Shukravar Pet serves a large population region, especially all the way here to Vijayanagar colony and southwest here. Now, Lakshmi West is a station on line 1 that will also serve some of this region here, but I didn't display it in this webio for obvious reasons. I wanted the focus of this webio to be on line 2, but Lakshmi West station would be here. So both this and this would serve this area here, the southwestern Pets area, such as the southern sweep Pet. So these people have an option, and this could also relieve congestion along Narian Peth, which is the next stop. Narian Peth will be a cross station between Line 1 and Line 2. It will be probably the busiest station in the system for the sole reason that it is the intersection station. So people coming from Line 1 can connect to Line 2 to go south to Mahalakshmi, Swarget, that area, or to go north to Shivaji Nagar, to Pune University, all the way up to Bainar area and Narayan Peth as I said is on Lakshmi Road so it's a good place to have an intersection of lines. It's right in the center of the city too. It's not like Pune railway station which is a bit to the northeast and would also make this line a really awkward shape. So that's why I made Narayan Peth the intersection of the two lines. Lots of retail along Lakshmi Road it would heavily benefit from having a cross station right here. It would make Pune more centralized almost. Now I'm still saying that Pune, many people commute all over, but it'll serve as like, where is Pune? Where is central Pune? This is central Pune. Remember what Pune is historically, the sites of shops and forts. And speaking of forts, the next station is Shaniwar Peth, which means Saturday in Marathi. And Shaniwar has a famous fort here. And this fort was one of the big Maratha forts during the 1800s. So a little bit of history to, for you there, in addition to like some tourism. So you don't have to fly 8,500 miles from the USA to Pune or wherever you live to Pune to see this or know about this. It's right here. So fun fact, whenever you visit Pune next time, go to Shaniwar Peth. There's a nice fort here and you'll be pleased. However, Shaniwar Peth does have a little bit of an issue and that will have to be a relatively deep station because it is just south of the Muta River. So this is a river valley here, and this is all underground. So the station would be relatively deep. So I think elevator banks, no, escalator banks, or like lifts, like high-speed lifts would be required in Shaniwar Peth. And the residential and commercial aspects of this area here are very similar to the other Peth stations. It also serves a large area. For example, Gandhinagar area right here, all the way southwest to here like almost like Narayan well Narayan Peth is here too but like people in like northern Narayan Peth who want to avoid the bustle here could go to Shaniwar Peth and as I said the Peths region it turns out to be the most dense part of Pune it doesn't have the tallest buildings but the buildings are clustered so close together and the average flat size is here on like 1 BHK compared to like 2 or 3 further out in Bainar which we'll get to so after Shaniwar Peth it crosses the Muta River and this station is Topakhana. Topakhana is a relatively high-end business and factory district here. There's some universities along here as well and it's again like it serves a reasonably sized area all of this right here and this is a pretty wealthy and desirable part of Pune. There's a mixture of high-end and middle range residential here and some offices as well. So that's why I made a station as at Topakana. Next station is Shivaji Nagar. Now Shivaji Nagar is a very interesting station. I honestly think they should upgrade the station, the actual railway station of Shivaji Nagar. Because trying to focus Pune on Pune railway station won't work in the long term future. Because Pune is growing out in all different locations and more recently to the south and west. 
Shivaji Nagar is much closer to Bainar, which is housing like ridiculous development. So they need to upgrade Shivaji Nagar to like six tracks at least and make it world class standard. Speaking of world class standard, the the reason I didn't make the line just follow roughly to Pimpri Chinswad area is because I felt that you could just upgrade the existing line, as in make the trains better, make the stations better, or at least make a multi-class system where first class has AC and it, may, it would be much more attractive to a higher end clientele because Pune's middle class is rapidly growing and to keep this line running well and keeping it profitable for the city, I do think that making a multi-class system could work. Now other people may have different opinions and please leave that in the comments but many what it will turn out is that many developing countries especially in the railway systems have multi-class coaches so like one coach could be first class another second class and it serves a wider clientele the india high speed railway lines could have some type of system now this would work much better because it's not as high of a speed so you could make open coaches relatively easily on the metro line so after Shivaji Nagar, the line curves to the west and the northwest. And just as it enters Gokhil Kin no Ganesh Kin Road, this station is Premnagar. Premnagar, now this is all very high-end stuff right here. Premnagar and Ganesh King are both close to Gokhil Nagar. And Gokhil Nagar is among the wealthiest parts of Pune. Now bearing this right here, it has some of the only five-star hotels in Pune. I believe the JW Marriott is along this road and a couple other hotels as well. I don't remember on the top of my head. But many business travelers will come along here. And I was actually thinking of ending the line right here, but then I saw the rapid construction in the Bainer area and I thought, you know what, extend it up there. So Premnagar and the next station Ganesh Kind are vital for serving this. Lots of people here can like they can stay here and easily take the metro line to work wherever they are and Pune people work all over I keep emphasizing that people work all over now Naryanpeth could be like the happening place of old Pune but for day-to-day -day life no one station will serve um like the vast of like D boardings for offices if you know what I mean it's not like CST in Mumbai for example would like would analogize with one of these stations so the next station is Ganeshkind Ganeshkind I think will be a very highly used station it is the northern northwestern most of what will serve the business trip here so all the people coming from Bainar area would get off at Ganeshkind and get on to hopefully AC buses to go south to Gokilnagar and Gokilnagar has a lot of offices along this road here so it's turning out that many people here are working in this area here and they could use a station, the, the metro rather, between these five stations here. But they could also go to Ganeshkind or further east, but specifically Ganeshkind and get on an AC bus and go to their offices here. That's pretty nice, right? You don't have to deal with the ever-increasing traffic of Bainer Road, given that the car ownership of Pune is vastly increasing. And the last time I went to Pune, I had to keep a handkerchief over my mouth to feel safe. I hope this metro line will at least somewhat relieve all that smog. Also, Ganeshkind is just south of the University of Pune. And university population in India is very much similar to university population of any other country, whether it's third world or first world. So university population generally doesn't have a car, but it's still like a higher end clientele. So this would be a big boon to the metro line. And it and Ganeshkin turns out to be right on the southern edge of Pune University. So there you go. Lots of population here, Pune University, the entire system has 500,000 people and quite a bit of them go right here. So lots of population, student population, Ganeshkind, they would probably want to go to their internships, research, those nice new restaurants coming up all across Pune, whatever. Here's a station for them. So just west of Ganeshkin, the line deviates from Ganeshkin Road and enters Bainer Road. And Bainer Road is where it'll go on a viaduct again. I didn't make a viaduct or Ganeshkin Road due to the, the flyovers, especially at the station right here. But now this is a viaduct. 
this is national society here and then now what you'll realize I won't go into too much detail about each station much more but these are all upcoming areas upcoming rather wealthy areas much of the lower middle class is in central Pune the upper middle class like the car owning families will be out here so these are the people who demand better services so National Society, Varsha Park are both residential areas. Benargon is a little different. Benargon has a couple of residential places as well, but it has some more commercial. Not to mention though, that this is where you get into much of the new development. Benargon all the way to what I call Bainer West is where much of the new development is going. If you ever drive on the Mumbai Pune bypass road, you will see it in Bainer. Now inner Bainer is not as like it's much more developed so you won't see much new construction here but outer banner is a complete different story if you came here 10 min 10 years ago this would be complete farmland and i know that from experience which i've visited pune eight times but nowadays you will see all these 10 story 12 story high rises coming up here and all these people could either a own a car but deal with the traffic of pune or b going on an AC metro system gliding over the streets and diving under the smog to get to their destination. So after Bainer gone, next station is Balewadi and after that is Bainer West. Balewadi has a really similar concept to Bainer gone but Bainer West is a little more interesting. There's a lot of space just to the south of Bainer Road here and I do think they should build a parking lot of some sort, so a parking garage. You know why? It's really close to the highway right here, not to mention the outermost station. So people coming from near and far, as in all the way from the Mumbai area and beyond, can converge on Bainer West and forget about dealing with the insane Pune traffic. Pune traffic is not friendly. They would not want to deal with it whenever coming in here. It would be a big departure from some people, especially if they're going to like Lonavala or something like that, for example. If they're coming from there to here, you're going from a land of mountains in a hill town to a place of like complete chaos like i don't know how people don't crash that often but it's pretty impressive if you ask me because there's so much smog so much crazy driving so much road rage might as well just build a station near the highway so that like this is where like probably like one of the last sane places of driving is and driving is so bad in pune one time i was driving with another driver and he stopped at a red light and people hit the SUV because he stopped at a red light. That's how crazy driving is. To avoid all that nonsense, to say the least, people can converge on Bainer West and take the metro all the way. Not to mention the metro will have relatively high ridership throughout the line. The end stations won't be some random place that very few people use. It'll be the end of the line, but the region expands. It funnels out. It funnels out to the immediate region here it funnels out to National Highway 4 going all the way to Mumbai and Western Chinswad and Pimpri. So yeah, Bainer West, very important station and these stations along bypass roads in India are what I think will truly drive these metro lines towards completion. Such metro lines do involve a lot of politics but I do think one thing that is going for such a metro line in Pune, whether it's this route or any other route, is that it is close to a major automobile thoroughfare. So that's basically it. That's the end of the line. Now let's zoom out and see where we have come. So there you have it. Line 2 of the Pune Metro connecting all the way from Bainer West 18 kilometers south to Mahalakshmi serving a diverse yet unified clientele. Pune is one city I don't think serving like serving it with only met one metro line would you do justice of how much it needs metros. Bainer Road all the way to Satara Road and all the other roads in between will be vastly cleared up if such a line is built to world class standards. The top speed of this line is 80 km per hour and as I said it goes underground for half of it and above ground on a wider for the other half. So I would like to thank you for watching. It has been a pleasure to draw such a line and just virtually visit Pune in general. I hope I see you guys soon. 
Thank you so much, and goodbye. The river and this station is Topakana. Topakana is a relatively high-end business and factory district here. There's some universities along here as well. And it's again like it serves a reasonably sized area, all of this right here. And this is a pretty wealthy and desirable part of Pune. There's a mixture of high-end and middle range residential here and some offices as well. So that's why I made a station as at Topakana. Next station is Shivaji Nagar. Now Shivaji Nagar is a very interesting station. I honestly think they should upgrade the station, the actual railway station of Shivaji Nagar. Because trying to focus Pune on Pune railway station won't work in the long term future. Because Pune is growing out in all different locations and more recently to the south and west. Shivaji Nagar is much closer to Bainar, which is housing like ridiculous development. So they need to upgrade Shivaji Nagar to like six tracks at least and make it world class standard. Speaking of world class standard, the, the reason I didn't make the line just follow roughly to Pimpri Chinswad area is because I felt that you could just upgrade the existing line, as in make the trains better, make the stations better or at least make a multi-class system where first class has AC and it would be much more attractive to a higher end clientele because Pune's middle class is rapidly growing and to keep this line running well and keeping it profitable for the city, I do think that making a multi-class system could work. Now other people may have different opinions and please leave that in the comments but many, what it will turn out is that many developing countries, especially in the railway systems, have multi-class coaches so like one coach could be first class another second class and it serves a wider clientele the india high-speed railway lines could have some type of system now this would work much better because it's not as high of a speed so you could make open coaches relatively easily on the metro line so after shivaji nagar the line curves to the west and the northwest and just as it enters Gokhilkin, no, Ganeshkin Road, this station is Premnagar. Premnagar, now this is all very high end stuff right here. Premnagar and Ganesh King are both close to Gokhilnagar. And Gokhilnagar is among the wealthiest parts of Pune. Now, bearing this right here, it has some of the only five star hotels in Pune. I believe the JW Marriott is along this road and a couple other hotels as well. I don't remember on the top of my head. But many business travelers will come along here. And I was actually thinking of ending the line right. Enters Gokhilkin, no, Ganeshkin Road. This station is Premnagar. Premnagar, now this is all very high-end stuff right here. Premnagar and Ganesh King are both close to Gokhilnagar. And Gokhilnagar is among the wealthiest parts of Pune. Now, bearing this right here, it has some of the only five star hotels in Pune. I believe the JW Marriott is along this road and a couple other hotels as well. I don't remember on the top of my head, but many business travelers will come along here. And I was actually thinking of ending the line right here, but then I saw the rapid construction in the Bainer area and I thought, you know what, extend it up there. So Premnagar and the next station Ganesh Kind are vital for serving this. Lots of people here can like they can stay here and easily take the metro line to work wherever they are and Pune people work all over I keep emphasizing that people work all over now Narayan Peth could be like the happening place of old Pune but for day to day life no one station will serve um, like the vast of like deboardings for offices if you know what I mean it's not like CST in Mumbai for example would like would analogize with one of these stations so the next station is Ganeshkind Ganeshkind I think will be a very highly used station it is the northern northwestern most of what will serve the business trip here so all the people coming from Bainar area 
would get off at Ganeshkind and get on to hopefully AC buses to go south to Gokilnagar. And Gokilnagar has a lot of offices along this road here. So it's turning out that many people here are working in this area here and they could use a station, the, the metro rather, between these five stations here. But they could also go to Ganeshkind or further east, but specifically Ganeshkind and get on an AC bus and go to their offices here. That's pretty nice, right? You don't have to deal with the ever-increasing traffic of Bena Road, given that the car ownership of Pune is vastly increasing. And the last time I went to Pune, I had to keep a handkerchief over my mouth to feel safe. I hope this metro line will at least somewhat relieve all that smog. Also, Ganeshkind is just south of the University of Pune. And university population in India is very much similar to the university population of any other country, whether it's third world or first world. So university population generally doesn't have a car, but it's still like a higher end clientele. So this would be a big boon to the metro line. And, it, and Ganeshkin turns out to be right on the southern edge of Pune University. So there you go. Lots of population here, Pune University, the entire system has 500,000. So all this can be served by Mahalakshmi here. This is the reason why I didn't make it go east like this. So after Mahalakshmi, this is an elevated station. The line continues on the, along the median of Swami Road. And the next station is Manesh Society. Now Manesh Society has some slums here, but it's much more of a higher end district. So think of this as where more people will start their journey. Mahalakshmi has a little more offices than Manish society. So this will be more like more parking spaces would be required, like many facilities in a station that would work well in a residential sit setting. And Pune does have a relatively high ownership of especially scooters and whatnot. So I think a scooter garage would work very well in Manish society. After Manish society, the next station is Ramya Nagari. Ramya Nagari is very similar to Manesh society and it has a higher clientele. There are even some single family houses and small apartments here. So you need to make this metro reasonably comfortable. You don't want to make it as bad as the Mumbai Suburban Railway, for example. You don't want to even make it as bad as a leaking Mumbai Metro because that's honestly embarrassing. The first week when the Mumbai Metro opened, it started leaking during the monsoon season and many people got fed up with it and they just went back to driving along the busy Anderi Gathkopar link road. I don't want this metro to be like that. I want it to be accessible for as many people as possible, including people of all income levels, but at the same time be attractive to all people. Now, I don't know if we should make like a first class or second class system like how the Mumbai Suburban Railway does, but that could be a very cool possibility that that could happen. So like second class could be open air, non-air AC, but maybe fans. It will serve a lot more people in the local area, like the slums, for example, and it will greatly reduce the pollution and congestion. First class will be AC, comfortable seats, probably leather, high tech, all of that. I'm now not necessarily thinking that would be the way to go, but if you like that, please leave that in the comments. I think Pune is a city where such a system would really work well. So after Ramyanagari, the next station is Parijat Society. And this is the last station on a viaduct. And this is, again, a relatively high-end area residential. So after that, it continues on Swami Road, but it goes underground as it enters the busy Satara Road. Satara Road is a main arterial road serving South Pune. And the next station is Tavare. Tavare has quite a bit of offices here with the intersection of Satara Road and Swami Road. A lot of retail and offices here due to a busy intersection. And Tavare station will be underground, so will not be better. Or at least make a multi-class system where first class has AC and it would be much more attractive to a higher end clientele because Pune's middle class is rapidly growing. And to keep this line running well and keeping it profitable for the city, I do think that making a multi-class system could work. Now, other people may have different opinions and please leave that in the comments, but many, what it will turn out is that many developing countries, especially in the railway systems, have multi-class coaches. So like, one coach could be first class, another second class, and it serves a wider clientele. 
the India high speed railway lines could have some type of system. Now this would work much better because it's not as high of a speed so you could make open coaches relatively easily on the metro line. So after Shivaji Nagar the line curves to the west and the northwest and just as it enters Gokhilkin no Ganeshkin road this station is Premnagar. Premnagar now this is all very high end stuff right here. Premnagar and Ganesh King are both close to Gokhilnagar and Gokhilnagar is among the wealthiest parts of Pune. Now bearing this right here it has some of the only five star hotels in Pune. I believe the JW Marriott is along this road and a couple other hotels as well. I don't remember on the top of my head but many business travelers will come along here and I was actually thinking of ending the line right here but then I saw the rapid construction in the Bainar area and I thought you know what, extend it up there. So Premnagar and the next station Ganesh Kind are vital for serving this. Lots of people here can like they can stay here and easily take the metro line to work wherever they are. And Pune people work all over, I keep emphasizing that. People work all over. Now Naryanpeth could be like the happening place of old Pune but for day to day life no one station will serve um, like the vast of like D boardings for offices if you know what I mean it's not like CST in Mumbai for example would like would analogize with one of these stations so the next station is Ganeshkind Ganeshkind I think will be a very highly used station it is the northern northwestern most of what will serve the business trip here so all the people coming from Bainar area would get off at Ganeshkind and get onto hopefully AC buses to go south to Gokilnagar. And Gokilnagar has a lot of offices along this road here. So it's turning out that many people here are working in this area here and they could use a station, the, the metro rather, between these five stations here. But they could also as well. So that's why I made a station as at Topakana. Next station is Shivajinagar. Now Shivaji Nagar is a very interesting station. I honestly think they should upgrade the station, the actual railway station of Shivaji Nagar. Because trying to focus Pune on Pune railway station won't work in the long term future. Because Pune is growing out in all different locations and more recently to the south and west. Shivaji Nagar is much closer to Bainar which is housing like ridiculous development. So they need to upgrade Shivaji Nagar to like six tracks at least and make it world class standard. Speaking of world class standard, the, the reason I didn't make the line just follow roughly to Pimpri Chinswad area is because I felt that you could just upgrade the existing line as in make the trains better, make the stations better or at least make a multi-class system where first class has AC and it, may, it would be much more attractive to a higher end clientele because Pune's middle class is rapidly growing and to keep this line running well and keeping it profitable for the city I do think that making a multi-class system could work. Now other people may have different opinions and please leave that in the comments but many what it will turn out is that many developing countries especially in the railway systems have multi-class coaches so like one coach could be first class, another second class, and it serves a wider clientele. The India high speed railway lines could have some type of system. Now this would work much better because it's not as high of a speed, so you could make open coaches relatively easily on the metro line. So after Shivaji Nagar, the line curves to the west and the northwest. And just as it enters Gokhilkin, no Ganeshkin road, this station is Premnagar. Premnagar, now this is all very high end stuff right here. Premnagar and Ganesh King are both close to Gokhilnagar. And Gokhilnagar is among the wealthiest parts of Pune. Now, bearing this right here, it has some of the only five star hotels in Pune. I believe the JW Marriott is along this road and a couple other hotels as well. I don't remember on the top of my head. But many business travelers will come along here. And I was actually thinking of ending the line right here but then I saw the rapid construction in the Bainar area and I thought, you know what, extend it up there. So 
Premnagar and the next station Ganesh Kind are vital for serving this. Lots of people here can like they can stay here and easily take the metro line to work wherever they are. And Pune, people work all over. I keep emphasizing that. People work all over. Now Narayan Peth could be like the happening path. There's a nice fort here and you'll be pleased. However, Shaniwar Peth does have a little bit of an issue and that will have to be a relatively deep station because it is just south of the Muta River. So this is a river valley here and this is all underground. So the station would be relatively deep. So I think elevator banks, no escalator banks or like lifts, like high speed lifts would be required in Shaniwar Peth. And the residential and commercial aspects of this area here are very similar to the other Peth stations. It also serves a large area. For example, Gandhinagar area right here, all the way southwest to here. Like almost like Narayan. Well, Narayan Peth is here too, but like people in like northern Narayan Peth who want to avoid the bustle here could go to Shaniwar Peth. And as I said, the Peth's region, it turns out to be the most dense part of Pune. It doesn't have the tallest buildings, but the buildings are clustered so close together. And the average flat size is here on like one DHK compared to like two or three further out in Bainer, which we'll get to. So after Shaniwar Peth, it crosses the Muta River. And this station is Topakhana. Topakhana is a relatively high-end business and factory district here. There's some universities along here as well. And it's, again, like, it serves a reasonably sized area, all of this right here. And this is a pretty wealthy and desirable part of Pune. There's a mixture of high-end and middle-range residential here and some offices as well. So that's why I made a station as, at Topakana. Next station is Shivaji Nagar. Now, Shivaji Nagar is a very interesting station. I honestly think they should upgrade the station, the actual railway station of Shivaji Nagar. Because trying to focus Pune on Pune railway station won't work in the long term future. Because Pune is growing out in all different locations and more recently to the south and west. Shivaji Nagar is much closer to Bainar, which is housing like ridiculous development. So they need to upgrade Shivaji Nagar to like six tracks at least and make it world-class standard. Speaking of world-class standard, the, the reason I didn't make the line just follow roughly to Pimpri Chinswad area is because I felt that you could just upgrade the existing line, as in make the trains better, make the stations better, or at least make a multi-class system where first class has AC and it would be much more attractive to a higher end clientele because Pune's middle class is rapidly growing. And to keep this line running well and keeping it profitable for the city, I do think that making a multi-class system could work. Now, other people may have different opinions and please leave that.